knows a lot about all kinds of stuff, Professor Dave explains. In a previous tutorial, we learned about the types of economic systems, and we mentioned the concept of a command economy, or centrally planned economy. To review, command economies exist when a central authority, usually the government, guides the factors of production, and there is typically little input from the people. Command economies operate in direct contrast with market economies by going against private property, free market pricing, competition, and consumer choice. It's important to recognize that most economists maintain that command economies do more harm than good. Because governments usually own all factors of production in a centrally planned economy, this often leads to inefficiencies. For example, since the government fixes wages, workers often lack the incentive to work faster or produce more. The enormous and complex bureaucracy needed to make so many economic decisions can also harm efficiency. Command economies also sacrifice individual liberties in the name of societal goals. Historically, this has at times led to extreme brutality, as witnessed in the 1930s when the government of the Soviet Union murdered millions of peasants while stealing their land, in the name of collective ownership for those farming lands. Command economies also don't tend to reward innovation, as there is no profit incentive to encourage entrepreneurship. In summary, centrally planned economies are inefficient, harm innovation, don't meet consumer needs, and limit freedom. If command economies are so bad, why are they still appealing to some countries? First, the goal of a command economy is more economic equality. Theoretically, goods and services would be distributed more equitably. When the government does not get involved with the economy, some needs of a modern society would be difficult to meet in a free market. Big infrastructure projects, national defense, health care, and education are often taken on by central authorities because no entity in a free market is willing or able to take these on themselves. In other words, the incentives that naturally occur in a free market are not guaranteed for every good or service. Command economies can also provide jobs for anyone who wants one. Also, even if workers lack the incentive to work faster or produce more, at least their wages can be set so that they earn enough to have their needs met. Command economies can take on massive projects without waiting years to raise money, making deals with private contractors, or dealing with local regulations. Finally, command economies can tailor goods and services to benefit the common good without regard to profits. Now, it's important to recognize that command economies develop because autocratic leaders simply have an easier time controlling a society when they can completely control the economy. Today we see this in North Korea, which is arguably the only country in the world that currently has a fully centrally planned economy. However, there is still massive economic inequality there due to government corruption. North Korea is also considered the poorest country in Asia. The Soviet Union, a country which existed from 1922 to 1991, also largely possessed a command economy. However, its economy failed, and since its collapse, countries around the world that had previously been more open to command economies have redirected toward free markets. This is ultimately why nearly every country on the planet has some sort of mixed economy. Given the prevalence of this model, let's move forward and learn more about mixed economies next. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.